Hey, it's Tom from Pack Hacker, and in this video, we are taking a detailed look at the Evergoods CTB35, which I've been testing over the course of the last two weeks. It's also called the Civic Travel Bag, and I've taken it on a flight to New York and back to Detroit. So let's dive in. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about here is the exterior fabric. This is a 420D nylon. That's a little bit different than the typical 500D nylon that we see in a lot of other Evergoods bags. It's a little bit slicker, a bit of like a tighter weave, but it's easier to clean than the 500D and it's slick. It's slippery, so if you're like sliding it under the seat or the bin, it really helps you out with that, which I dig. Uh, it's kind of like an underrated feature to slicker fabrics. Now, this bag itself is not quite as structured as the CTB40, which we've reviewed in the past. That thing is basically, there's like foam liner on the outside and it stays completely structured. This is somewhere in between. The CPL28 liter, for example, I think has, I've got it right here, has a little bit more structure with the 500D and it's a little smaller. So there's like less fabric to flap around. This thing, when it gets empty, it is decently flappy but it does have some good structure retention because you're using 420D nylon on the outside and then 420D nylon liner on the inside. Um, great quality materials, as always with Evergoods, we have YKK zippers throughout and just some high quality hardware too and thoughtful designs on things like the hip belt and the elastic uh, strap keepers here, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So why don't I just kick it off by throwing this thing on? So. This is a 35 liter backpack. It's four pounds empty, which is, it's getting up there. Um, but if you're on like US based airlines, you're totally fine. It does have a lot of good structure to it. And it feels a little bit bigger than I guess you'd think, which is a good and a bad thing. At 35 liters, you can really fill this thing up. There's actually a ton of room. It feels like a big 35 liter bag, if that makes sense. And then, also, like the, the con of that is that it is a little bit big when you go to your destination. If you want to use it as an EDC bag, there's no like compression straps to tighten it down. You, you can still totally use it kind of as your daily driver when you arrive. It just doesn't get quite as small and compact as some other travel bags out there. So I have it on here, really great fit. I will say that in comparison, again, to the CPL 28 liter, which check out our review on that, the carry does feel slightly saggier, like it's not quite as structured. I, you know, with the C CPL 28 and the 24, I really feel that thing, that contour, like coming up on my back. And if I tighten this up, it does go up a little bit higher and I feel that and I'm getting a lot of load taken off of my shoulders with the hip belt here. Um, but it does feel like a slightly saggier carry than the CPL 28. It's a little less structured, it's a little bit bigger. I think that's to be expected. But just note that if you're like 35 or 28 liter, you could go either way. 28, I think is a better expression uh, from Evergoods in terms of like a, a minimal travel bag, um, in terms of comfort. So here I have it on. I mean, the hip belt is great. They did a lot of work on it. It's called like a 3D hip belt, which I don't really know what that means, but uh, basically it contours around and it's not just like a flat piece of fabric. So you can see it's really, the load is entirely on my hips, which is great. I've got this thing loaded up with a similar loadout to what I took to New York City with me. Uh, sternum strap here is removable. Really great, comfortable carry overall. And let's talk about some of the harness details here as well. So let me flip it over. We can get into some details. So no load lifters at the top. There's like a, a zote foam in here, which is comfortable and spongy and thick as well. So it's got all that going on, which is great. Two water bladder ports up here. So if you do have a hose, you can uh, you know, pop it through here for water bladder. It's always Evergoods is always focusing on urban and adventure, kind of weaving it all into one nice package. So we still have a lot of those adventure-based features going on here too. Uh, love the little detail here on the sternum strap with the Evergoods logo just kind of stitched in there. This is adjustable. I think it's a fine sternum strap. Totally does the job. We have a little daisy chain going down here, which it mounts on. Uh, hardware itself is Duraflex, 
pull that up through the camera so you can see. There you go. Nice adjustment straps. Really, you know, not a ton to talk about with these. It, they stay adjusted. The one thing that I wish these straps had, which I love, is what Evergoods does in the hip belt here, which has this elastic piece at the end that helps you manage the strap itself. I think that's really clever. It's one of the best I've seen. A lot of companies will just put on like an aftermarket elastic loop, but this is sewn right in. I love that. And I wish it was also on the sternum strap and the shoulder straps down here, but I guess you are getting the thickest strap managed here. So let me just put that back on and show you how that looks. So throwing that on, it's a nice little piece of strap managed. And then we got Duraflex buckles on the hip belt as well. Just looking down here at the bottom. So great quality hardware used throughout. Um, there's a luggage pass through here that you can also carry the bag from. I think it's totally fine. It's the right size. It works. The one thing that I will say that some of our, we've had uh, conversations in depth in Pack Hacker Pro about this, but the positioning of this luggage strap, should it be vertical or should it be horizontal? Some people like horizontal because they can get access to their bag when it's on their rolling luggage. Some like horizontal because it's a bit like of a lower profile. Um, in this case, there's access uh, cases for, for both ways on this bag because you have this side pocket here that you can access like this. So if it's on your roller bag, I mean, it is getting a little wide to be honest, but if it's on your roller bag, you, get, you can get access to this top pocket. Uh, but again, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. I want to make sure to cover the rest of the harness system. You got this kind of like clever back panel here. It's, it's a little bit different than what I've seen in the past. Uh, there's like some mesh in here. It's like a, a ripstop kind of rope look to it. It's, it's really, really quite nice. Relatively breathable. Again, it's a 35 liter bag. It's directly against your back. Might save you from a little back sweat, but if it's hot out, you're wearing this all day, you're probably gonna sweat. That's just any backpack. Hip belt, again, the 3D hip belt, I guess, yeah, contoured. There's a bit of like patterning here so you can fit it around your body more. It angles too, so I'm a little bit taller. I'm always like fighting when, it, when a hip belt is built in on a bag, I'm always like fighting to pull this down because my torso is quite long. So with this, it totally works well and it holds, holds the load quite well. One of the things that, I, that I, I do like that this stows away, but I found it to be a bit tough. So you just tuck it up here. It's kind of hard to get back into place. You want to go way to the top. Um, but with the buckle here and the elastic rolled up, I can feel that in my back sometimes, just depending on how I have it packed out and where this is positioned, so long as it doesn't like slip down. So it's pretty tight fit to like get my hand in here. And you kind of want to get it organized up here at the top, which can also be hard to do, just so you're not feeling that in your back, depending on how it's packed. And like with a laptop in here, can get pretty stiff in the back. I got a 16 inch MacBook Pro sitting over here that I'll, that I'll throw in later. Um, but I don't know, I feel like the, the hip belt stowing solution, it's like, it's okay. I mean, I like that it stows away, but it is a little bit more work. And then pulling it out too is kind of similar. It takes just a bit of fussing to grab it out, so. All right, so got those back out. So a bit of a hassle. I mean, you're probably not gonna be doing this as often as you're gonna be, say, opening the main compartment, but it's just something to note. I can feel that a bit in my, my back, depending on how it is stowed away in here. And then, um, you know, just stowing it in and out does take a little while, but I do like that it's here, and I do think that there are some smart things going on with the design that does make it very comfortable. All right, enough on the harness system. Let's move on to the, I mean, I guess one more thing I can talk about is like this extra fabric here. So a lot of Evergoods bags are designed to fit uh, higher on your back and kind of help curve around your shoulder. Again, I think the CPL 28 does a slightly better job at this. And it just, I feel like it can just stay up on your back a little bit more just being a smaller and slimmer bag. Uh, but the CTB 35 does a great job at it. Um, it's like, it's like a saggier feeling fit than the CPL 28, but it's a lot less saggy than a lot of travel bags out there because they did do so much work on the hardest system, if that makes sense. So more just comparing these two bags 
with one another. Water bottle pockets. Okay, so these, I love this fabric. It's kind of this like soft cloth material. Um, it's not really like a mesh. It's kind of a mesh. I don't know, it's stretchy, it's good. It's gonna hold stuff in, it feels really durable. You've got some elasticity up here. We've got a 32 ounce Nalgene right up here at the top. So if I shove that down, I mean, that's, that's locked in, really. Two little details here. We got two drain holes down at the bottom. So if you spill water in here or something, it can, it can air out, water can come out of there, dirt can come out of there. Um, here, we've got just a hydro flask, a bit of a, a thinner uh, form factor. This is a 21 ounce hydro flask light. Both of these bottles are filled up. And if you have both in, that hydro flask is gonna quite easily pop out. So these things, these water bottle pockets are grippy, but it's still a bit slick. Um, I've got a carabiner up here. I might actually just stick a carabiner through the hydro flask and this stay here just to make sure this doesn't fly out. Um, was on a flight. <laughs> uh, it was a flight to Arizona that I was on like last month and somebody's water bottle fell out of their <laughs> bag and it like rolled back like, you know, 40 aisles. So don't be that person. Use a carabiner clip clip in your hydro flask, or just go with an algae, go with a big bottle. I think on the Evergoods video, they were saying like a liter size bottle would fit in here. Um, so it's just really designed to be pretty massive as well. And I do like the way that the bag looks with, with it inside, it still looks pretty good. I'll just pull these out too, so you can get a better idea for the rest of the video, how that's going to be looking. Perfect. All right, moving on. I mean, we got the pack hacker patch going on up here. I believe it's a two by two square. Yeah, because this is two inches in height. Um, I did have this rectangular patch um, come off onto my Velcro car seats when this was just getting kind of tossed in and out. They do have like square high-vis patches and some people make smaller patches for these. So you can definitely go with the square size, but I've never had an issue with this when I was traveling. It just got caught on uh, just my car when I was taking this in and out. So that's something to note there. Let's see, what else can we talk about on the exterior? Cover that. There is a side handle right here at the top. Uh, I guess top in relation to this pocket. So I like this, you can grab it. Pretty decently balanced carry. I mean, despite, despite the water bottle pocket being on the back, like I'm not, you would think I'd grab this like this and it would like be like that. But it's relatively balanced, relatively parallel. And I really love that consideration. And I also lost my mic here. So I'm gonna throw that back on. Cool, all right. <laughs> Hopping back in, no handle on this side, which makes sense, because you're gonna be holding it like this. You wanna get access to the pocket up here. Small, little extra handle space here that's been stitched in at the top. I like this, because you can just throw a carabiner right here and it doesn't fly all over the strap. Whereas if I had it just on this top strap, it kind of would fly all over the place. So I like having that option. It's a good setup too. I was in a hot tub while I was in New York City and uh, I was able just to like clip on a wet bathing suit right after and just like get up and go with it. So it's always nice to have that option. You have like a towel or some shoes or something. You can really take advantage of those side handles to hang stuff off of. Okay, so that covers most of the exterior about the bag. One other thing, I know you're like, will he ever open the bag? Yes, I promise I will, but I wanna be as detailed as possible. Two little loops here that you can hold on to when you're zipping and unzipping the bag. So you just get a nice hold on that. Makes it a lot easier just to zip and unzip. All right, so that covers the outside. Let's get onto the inside. All right, we might as well kick it off with this pocket up here that I've been talking about. You can access when it's on that luggage trolley or when you're holding it by this side handle. So let's open it right up and get a little peek inside. So this is gonna match the organization that we've seen in the other uh, CPL series. It's pretty, pretty similar. Just got like a buff and some gloves up here at the top just to take advantage of this space. You can see that it's like uh, relatively open. Evergoods is saying that a lot of these pockets are 3D, which just means that there's room here for a little bit of flex. So it's not, the fabric isn't like straight up here and it's not like I can only put like a little notebook in here. It's got some flex, 
and it can increase in size as well. All right, so just some field notes on this side, blaze orange, and then I've got like a, a little pen on this side as well, little pocket pen. And then I really like this little mesh pocket here. I've just put like little bits and bobs in here. I've got like a battery bank and a cable, pretty ample size battery bank. So just to show you how far that pocket actually goes back, the zipper one goes back relatively far. Um, one of the things that I noticed with the pocket here for the field notes is the pocket stops sooner. So it's well suited for a passport. You can fit that in there. It's not gonna get lost in the back of your bag. You can also take advantage of that extra space for something like a battery bank, stick it inside. Also just like overkill YKK zipper here. Like that's I think where you're gonna get a little bit of that extra weight. Super robust zipper on this small pocket. This is number eight YKK zipper. So it's got some intensity, some mesh too, so you can see those little bits and bobs that you're working with in there. So zip that back up. Now I wanna talk about the favorite, my favorite feature on this bag. It's just the ample, quick dump pockets that we have here. So this up here is what Evergoods calls the yoke pocket. And that slides all the way around. You open it up and you just get access to everything inside. This is my favorite pocket for just like when you go through TSA and you're like, oh my gosh, my pockets are full with everything. Let me just dump everything inside. Um, you know, I've just got all these items in here, some gum, wallet, keys, sunglasses, set these off to the side for now. And then a small key clip as well right here, which is cool. So I really like this, uh, this plastic buckle. It's, it's nice, feels good in the hand. And Evergoods is one of the first companies that I've seen use a buckle like this. And a lot of companies have followed suit since. So really appreciate that. And yeah, there you go. Just really big empty space. If you wanna clean it, you can get access to it, the, the fabric inside pretty well too. Set this off to the side here. And now you can feel right here, there is an aluminum stay in the back in a plastic frame sheet. Um, or I believe there might be an aluminum stay on this side too, and that's what kind of keeps the handle a little bit more engaged and in check. But there is like some well-structuring, well-structured back panel here and aluminum stay so that it, the bag does stay structured. But again, some of that floppiness comes from this fabric up here, up top. So great pocket there. We have something similar going on in the front pocket. Let me open that up and just give you an idea of what's inside. I mean, there's just deceptively a lot in here. So I've got my tech kit right in there now. I've got a foldable compact hat, little hard drive, uh, just things of that nature. So let me just set this to the side. Just give you an idea of really how big that pocket is. Nice gray liner too. It makes it easy to see things. Uh, like black on gray is easy to see. I really like gray liner. It's probably my favorite color for a liner. Some colors get a little bit bright and crazy out there. So if that's your thing too, look for that. But pretty great liner. Now let's get on to the main compartment. So if I open this up again by grabbing the little exterior zipper, zipper pull, the zipper pull and then this little loop here, I can get access to what's inside. First thing I'll note, if you watch the Evergoods video, the positioning of this zipper is that so you can just open the bag a little bit on the side, fish your hand in and get access to anything in here while the rest of it is closed off. So that's a nice little access piece, a nice little detail there that I think is nice. Once you really get to know this bag and you use it, that's gonna be something that you're gonna know because it's a very secure pocket on the inside too. Um, so you have that option. Opening it up. What I did stuff in here was just a packable jacket. This is a Patagonia Nano Puff. I just felt that it went really well in here. This mesh feels like slightly kind of plasticky, like in a good way, in a good, like durable way. Um, and you can just see all the extra space that you can have. There's some uh, extra fabric here. So really, I mean, it just, you could put even more than what I put in there as well. Little top organization pocket here that I've just got open. Um, but this is a great spot for like, if you do want to put your passport inside of the main compartment, that can go well into this pocket. Let me just grab that notebook actually for you because that's close to passport size. So I can just stuff that here, right inside. That goes there. And then you have like another liner pocket on this side too for, you know, something smaller can go in there. And then just a good amount of empty space as well. And you can really see 
the extra fabric here just allows that pocket to really bow out. Just gonna try to give you like a better view of it. There's this little crease here and that fabric can really bow out. So that's like that, that 3D pocket that Evergoes is talking about. A little bit extra fabric so you can flux with what you're putting inside. Some information right there on the bag if you wanna pause the video and check it out. And then again, this is really why when I look at this bag, I'm like, there's so much room in here. Like it just feels big. It feels like a big 35 liter backpack. I've got Peak Design packing cubes in here, Heim Planet packing cubes, small gravel toiletry kit. So I'm just gonna pull this stuff out, set it off to the side here. And there we go. Room for a ton of clothes. I mean, if you're living like a digital nomad packing, uh, digital nomad lifestyle, and you're living, uh, working remotely, just living to travel, you could definitely do it in this bag. This is an ample dump pocket. As long as you're organized with packing cubes and you keep things compressed, you could definitely fit stuff inside. You've got this elastic material or this elasticated band here and this kind of meshy material on the back. That's gonna be similar to the water bottle pockets on the side, so very similar material. Um, if you have like documents or something, you could, you could throw those in here things of that nature. Um, I don't really do a lot with these pockets. The options here, I've got like a little cord organizer there. A little bit of webbing too, where you could lash something or mount something on the inside. Um, again, I just mainly use this as like a giant dump pocket, but you can feel free to do whatever you'd like. And then I just wanna talk about that laptop pocket. So let's go ahead and just grab my laptop real quick. So I always find these side laptop access to be a little bit odd on a travel backpack. I like the top a little bit more, but if I throw this in here, I guess first of all, I can just show you like the sizing of it. So there's a separate sleeve on the inside. You got a bit of structure here. I love that this laptop compartment basically floats in the middle of this bag. So it doesn't go all the way to the bottom. You have some suspension here at the bottom. So if your bag hits the ground, your laptop is protected. And then I also like this piece of Velcro that I can just stow back. Now, one of the things that I was noticing is I wonder, this might be a QA issue, but the, the Velcro target looks like a little bit lower. And if this comes down straight, it doesn't quite hit it right on the head, but uh, it's just like a little detail I was noticing, but I, I, I like just keeping that back here for quick access for the laptop. So if we pop that in, 16 inch slides in marvelously. And if you want to lock it down, put it into secure mode, you just pop that red uh, strap right over it. And I do have some other things back here too, which again, like the, between the back panel and the uh, hip belt being stowed inside, there is just like a little bit of dimension to this. So this is a laptop uh, stand. There's a bit of dimension to this. You gotta be strategic with how you pack this back part as well or you're gonna get like stuff sticking into your back. It's not too bad, but it's just something to notice. And usually the laptop is like the furthest back thing, but you do have this empty space here um, where you can put other stuff. So you just wanna be mindful of how you pack that. The last thing I wanna show you is just kind of like the floppiness compared to the CPL 28. So let me just pull everything out. Okay, so both the bags are empty here. I have the CTB35 on this side and the CPL28 on this side. And this is a, a lighter weight fabric here on the CTB35, 420D, 500D, and just a bit of extra fabric on the CTB35. So it does feel like just a little bit like looser because it's got, it's bigger, there's less fabric on it. Whereas I think the CPL28 is just a little bit like tighter. So I like the expression on the 28 liter a little bit better. Obviously the bigger your bag gets, the more floppy it's gonna be if there's no reinforcement compared to the CTB40, which was like all structured all the time. So I hope that kind of gives you a, the idea of the differences of these bags. And there you have it, the full review on the Evergoods CTB35. Thank you for keeping me here at Pack Hacker, your guide to smarter travel. We'll see you in the next video.